Hello, welcome to my tutorial on interactive PDFs. Today I'm going to take you through how to build an interactive PDF through Adobe InDesign and then we'll take it through over into Adobe Acrobat and make some finishing touches and showing you how to edit that pre-made form. So first thing is uh, when you're creating an interactive PDF, you want to design your material first before you start putting in the interactive elements. So I've created my creative brief here and I've put out all of the, um, the, the text, the icons, the design, all the boxes, everything that I'm going to need first. So I want to make sure that everything is in order and is in place. And I've used uh, margins and guides to make sure everything is aligned properly and the spacing is um, consistent as well. I've also set up uh, custom styles for my headings and my body um, and my secondary headings as well, so to keep that consistent too. So now we're going to um, transform the workspace into an interactive PDF workspace. So we can change that and switch back and forth to different workspaces in the top corner here. So I'm going to choose interactive for PDF and I've already have it. So I'm just going to reset that. You can also find it under the window menu workspace and interactive for PDF. So within here, I have all the tools I'm going to need to build out my interactive PDF. And I'm going to start with opening up my buttons and forms. So the first one I need is I want to make sure that this um, area, I'm going to have someone be able to type in their company name, primary contact, and so forth. So what we need to do, and I'm going to sort of turn back on my, my, my guides here, is I'm going to use my rectangle frame tool. So you pull out the rectangle frame tool and you create a frame where you want the input field to go. So I've created that there. And now from here, you're going to convert it into an interactive element. Right now it's just a frame. So there's two ways in which we can do that. The first way I'm going to show you is through the window, the buttons and forms window. So where it says type, I'm going to click on the drop down and I'm going to come down to text field. This is where I want them to allow to enter in the text. Now it's really important that we name all of our text fields or all of our um, interactive elements in the document. And so here I'll just put in company. Now below we have some PDF options. So if you don't see that, you might have a little button to select and see more. So I want to make sure that it's printable because when we print it out, if it's not selected, then it would be hidden in the printing. I want to do a required field so that when we submit, you can't submit unless it's required. And I want to make sure it is scrollable just in case we have a very long company name. It can still fit in there and I can just use my arrows back and forth to scroll through that. This is just a horizontal scrolling. This is not a vertical scrolling. So in here, I'm going to choose my font choice. Now make sure you choose a font that is um, readily available or, or likely available to whoever is going to be opening this and choose a size that is appropriate. So a size between eight points to around 10 or 11, depending on the type size or type that you're using and nothing beyond 12. When you're using anything on 12 for body copy or any input copy, it's almost too large and it tends to um, take up too much space if we're going to need some extra space in here. So I have that here. Now I've also gone ahead and done the other fields for phone and email and website. Now I've left the date area blank and that is because we can actually, we can't put in an input date field unless we want to just put a, a basic text field. I can just write the date in myself. But if we want to have the ability to select a date from like, let's say a drop down calendar, we can do that, but it would have to be once we're finished with this and we can do that in Acrobat. So moving below, we have the project objective. So I've created a, just a regular rectangle box and I've put on here a stroke. So the stroke is a one point with a 10% black. So just something very light. I don't need large um, blocks of, of um, colored boxes, but uh, so just a 10% black. Now I'm going to show you a little different way that we can add an interactive 
element element. So we're going to convert this into an interactive element. So what I'll do is I'll right click interactive and say convert to text field. So it's the exact same way as if we were to come up here. Um, but there are instances where we're going to want to use this, which I'm going to show you uh, for the checkboxes. So in their text field, I'm going to say objective and my PDF options are going to be scrollable, yes, but I want it to be multi-line. So when I click on multi-line, now the scrolling is going to be uh, vertical and not horizontal. So if I have multiple lines, it'll be in a paragraph in here. It won't scroll outside of the, um, the box. It might scroll just a little bit under. Again, I'm going to change my font size. And... Now I have three more text boxes here. So I can do this you know, over and over and over, but the other thing that we can do very easily is we can just either duplicate it, duplicate this box, Oops. copy and paste, and then just change the dimensions of that. Or what we can also do is we can select multiple boxes at the same time and do them all together. So I'll demonstrate that just below here where it has brand attributes and core values. I'll select both of those rectangles and I will set it to a text field. I'll adjust so make it multi-line. Now the only thing we would need to adjust is just the name. So I'll want to add that. Now here we have some checkboxes. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and already pre-designed my checkboxes. Right click and I will come down to my interactive and I'll convert that object to a checkbox. I'll come up here and I'm going to change the name to visual identity. And now you see the normal and off states. Well, what happened was it uh, InDesign put in a default checkbox for me. So to remove that, I just need to double click in there and then just delete that um, default. So now I have a normal state and the off state is duplicated. So we need to adjust that off state. And I don't wanna have the check mark in there in my off state. So while this is highlighted, I'm gonna come over and double click and then I'll just delete that item. So now I have on and off. Now what I've gone ahead and I've already um, built out the second option. So these are the same thing as what I've just built here. So what I would like for these is all to be on the off default. So when you open up the PDF, they are not checked and we can manually check them. So next up we have combo boxes. So I've already gone ahead and done a combo box using the same process as we did for the text field. We create a rectangle frame, place it in the area that we want it, and we will come over to our type and I'll select combo box. Now this is going to be a drop down menu. So this will, when we click on it, will show different selection items for us. What, where we put those items are in the bottom here, so our list items. So I've listed different age ranges where you can come in and delete or add. And then we can also move them around. So if I were to just select it, hold it down, grab it, pull it up, and then deselect, it will lift and change. I've done that now for the gender and the income level and education. The difference between a combo box and a list box, a list box will not be a drop down, so it'll just show everything there where you would just select. So I'm going to convert my education to a list box so that you'll be able to see what the difference is. So I'll put here high school, some college. and I'll rename that. 
Now the area in which you're going to see this is really, really tiny. So I need to stretch that open so that I can see multiple um, list items here. Let's go and change the font. I'm going to make it a little smaller so that I can see more. Okay, now moving along, we are going to set in a client signature and we are going to add functionality onto the print button. So to add a client signature, I can again come to the rectangle frame, set the area I want this, this signature and change the type to signature field. And that would be all we need there. Now for the print button, The print button, I'm going to select both of these because I want both of them to be a print button on their um, together. So I'm going to group those and I'm going to come up to type and I'm going to say button. So this is going to be a button and I'm going to say name this print. Now we have a normal state. We have a rollover if we wish and the rollover, what I can do is I can double click in there and maybe I'll change my print color. So I got normal and rollover. Now what we want to happen, we want to add an action. So the action that we're going to do here is going to be print form. And that will just um, bypass the, the menu window and we can just open up uh, the print dialog settings. Now the other type of action we can add on is a web URL which I have on the first page, some icons. So these icons, I want to link to a website. So we have Instagram here. So I just select my icon, go to type, add button, and I'm gonna name this my Instagram. Actions are gonna go to a URL, and we add our URL here. And we can do the same thing for this if you wanted that to be linking to your website or another external site. So now let's go and export this and see how it looks. So I'm going to go under File and Export. Now really important to note that the format needs to be Adobe PDF Interactive. Do not select Adobe PDF Print because none of those interactivities will come up. So we want to make sure it's interactive and save. Now we have another dialog window here and we're going to keep all of the default settings and just ensure that you are including forms and media. If we do not include that, if we just say appearance, you're not going to have any interaction in there. So we do want to include that and we'll say, okay, so now we are in Adobe Acrobat and this is a completely editable document. So I can click in here and I can start typing. I can press tab to go over to another section, my project objective, and I can start adding in some information. You can see that it's a multi-line. We have here this hover, so if I were to click on that, it's going to take me to Instagram. And we have our checkboxes. So my visual identity, my brand collateral, and my digital assets. So I can either deselect or select the ones that I want to have. Now, if you only wanted to have one of these selected at a time, and if you wanted to select one and then the others would um, turn off, then we are going to be using a radio button and not a checkbox. So I will demonstrate the difference of that, whereas I will select all of these buttons and I will come to radio button. So the radio button is, this is the on state. I'll have it off. and off. And if I wanted the on state to be different than that circle, I can same thing, double click inside and adjust that um, however I'd like. Now, if I go to export, it 
and select one of these options. If I go to the next one, that one will turn off. So you can only have one selection at a time. So that is the difference between a checkbox and a radio button. Now on the second page, we have our drop downs. So here is the combo box, which has a variety of, of options in here. And we have our list box. So this is what the list box looks like. You'll just see a, um, a few and then you can scroll through them. So I can pick up any of these. So you can either choose a combo or a list. And at the very bottom, we have our client signature, where if you were to click here, it's going to prompt you to sign this, this field. And I'm just going to cancel. And then we have our print. So here I'm hovering over the print and you can see that it's changing color and I click and it will open up my print dialog box. Now the date function, what, that's one thing we wanted to add in here in order for um, our clients to add in the date. So what I'm going to do is gonna, now I'm going to use prepare form. So the prepare form element is going to give us some added features. So if I click prepare form, if you can't find it there, you're going to go under view, tools, prepare form. So I want to add a date in here. So I'll come up to my date field. I'll click here. I'll come down to date. I'll add a rectangle and I'm going to stretch it to the same length as my line. And now just double click to open up your properties. So we have some format and the appearance. I definitely want to change the, the font to be matching with the rest. And the format of my date, I can change. So you can see the example current format. This is how it'll look. So if you wanted to change it and have it maybe written out, um, you can do it that way or you can have a long way and close. So now if I click in the dates area, there'll be a little drop down for me to select the calendar. And that is it. That concludes our interactive PDF.